kind of moonwalk back. Hi, welcome to 4Z Fit Food. This is episode 47, and so we decided we're going to talk a little bit about active rest, specifically for when you're in Kung Fu class or your strength training class, whatever class that you're training session that you're in, options for you to do in between exercises or in between maybe specifically like a drill class for martial arts where you're kind of going back and forth and then there's a little period of time where you're waiting to do the next set of, of uh, drills. Or if you think about maybe in a strength training routine where you have a set of exercises, like an upper body exercise, a core exercise, and a lower body exercise, and then you're, you're trying to recover in between that. So we can call this active rest or active recovery. Because a lot of times what happens is um, you can just be sitting by the side, and there is benefit to that. Because if your heart rate is too up, is too high, or you're really fatigued, maybe you do need to take that rest. But there are other options for you to do that can be, uh, you can be resting, but also be working towards what the next drill is going to be. Right? Um, so, uh, first of all, I think it kind of is helpful to think about it in your body in sections, even though your whole body is one unit, right? But um, we don't have time to go over the entire FMS screen, a functional movement screen, but if you have the opportunity to be screened by a professional or Kung Fu is its own screen, like if you look at our, our basics, for example, of the Wallum system, there are certain movements that are required and if you're not able to do it, that is a great opportunity for you to realize, oh, these are some things that I can work on. Just on the basics, nothing, of, not, nothing really too fancy. Um, and then, so then when you're doing exercises and you need rest, you'd be like, you know what, let me work on, I know my ankle is really tight, or I know that my hips are tight, or maybe I need to work on my posture for my forms, um, my shoulders, or things like that. So that is kind of like the concept of active recovery or active rest in between classes. Yes, so um, in between exercises between and classes. Exercise. So like Oscar said, um, pretty much I think of this for me on my side, on the Kung Fu side, in between a drill class or when you are not the person up doing forms. Um, I know sometimes in our advanced class we're doing like really like conditioning exercises. This is kind of the opposite of that. We're not necessarily doing any conditioning. This is if you're feeling like you can't catch your breath or you just... Um, you know, you're breathing, but you maybe want to work on something, like you said, um, as long as it's not disruptive to the Kung Fu class or disrespectful, like I don't want you like laying down and trying to do like Shavasana breathing or anything like that. So um, some of these are, are really good because it'll keep you kind of out of the way of the classroom, but also will dually, you know, benefit your body. But if you're home, there's some other stuff that you could do as well that we're going to go over. But if you're in class, um, I like you to actually just like really hyper focus on your breathing and that's one of the first things that I think Oscar is going to go over um, Just from the Kung Fu side, we call it bifid sal breathing um, But there's different positioning you can do that will help kind of reset your body, right? So there's a Few things to go over with the breathing especially for martial artists, right? I was of the philosophy that at Let's say you were doing uh, some kicking drills and you wore yourself out and then you're at the side and you're here and you're just kind of bent over and breathing. I used to think, and I still sort of do, that sometimes you're kind of compressing your organs and you're not allowing your heart to kind of let the blood flow go through. But there's a lot of data showing that sometimes that is just the way that we've evolved to recover is by kind of having your hands here and taking a couple of deep breaths. I think where the, the challenge, or maybe some people may find argument, is where is your intention? Or actually, that's where I think is where you should have the, where the nuance is. So if you are off to the side and you're waiting and you're trying to recover, and you're just completely just giving up, and you're just breathing, eyes are closed, uh, not focusing on, on what you're doing, but just kind of, let's say, quote unquote, giving up, that's where I think I have a problem. But if you were to come over to the side, slide your hands down and just take really intentional breaths where you're trying to draw in a lot of air and then you're trying to exhale all the air out. That's, I think, beneficial compared to this maybe hyperventilating and just laying down or collapsing on the floor. That's not really going to get you to recover because your mindset is, is not focusing on recovery. So that is one option is this kind of like, all right, let me just kind of take a couple of intentional deep breaths in and out, and that may set you up for success moving on. And then the other type is what I used to do all the time, which was I would say, 
if you can, is to keep slightly moving. So you just finished your drill, your, your intention is to just collapse, is to just kind of shake it off, shake off tension is one of the things that we call it. Lightly kind of, almost like you're shadow boxing. But don't and actually shadow box, don't actually you shadow. might hit somebody walking right. by. But kind of like you're moving around, you're shaking off any tension, still focusing on deep breaths, and I like kind of like leaning back and breathing, I like leaning forward and breathing. The, the important thing is just remember that word is, is, keep, the, breathing. is keep breathing and then the intention of what you're doing. The, 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 the words we're using are active rest or active recovery. So you're not completely just, I'm just resting on the side. You're doing something active to promote your recovery in order to benefit you for the next action that you're going to take. So that's kind of my spiel of breathing on the side. Yeah. So that's, that's my go-to, what I prefer, because usually the rotation is pretty quick mm -hmm. as well, so you don't have time to get into some elaborate position and do all these things. Um, I think if you can just kind of focus on your breathing, it also sets your intention and your mind, and just like maybe give yourself, if I'm feeling that way, I'm gonna take three breaths and then get back into it, or right. give yourself maybe a count or a number or a goal or go-to. Um, so there's also some exercises or some positions other than just breathing positions that um, you are going to go over. So that could be, you know, um, in between sets at home or, you know, when you're home and you're running through all of your forms back to back and you set the timer for 30 minutes because that's what you guys do every day after, you know, when you're not in class, right? Yes, no, maybe, if not, um, but if you do find yourself getting winded in your home and you're like, well, you know, in between the active rest, um, we talked about a couple weeks ago with the FMS, like say you had, um, some ankle or whatever, there's like a good sitting position uh, or kneeling position, there's some hip flexor stuff. So whatever, like Oscar said, that you feel like you need a target, that's a good time to do it. Yeah, so we'll just go from the top down and go pretty quickly on it and realize that this doesn't cover everything. This is just, I'll just use myself as an example, right? So number one, your attention, your breathing, your thinking of what you're doing at the side as an active recovery that is recovering you from what you just did and also preparing you for your next action, right? That is the intention that we want to have when we're doing our active recovery. So breathing is, is the first thing. Um, and then everything else that I'm going to talk about, you're going to still continue to try to breathe the same way. Um, so going from the top down, a lot of people kind of jammed up in their shoulders and their, and their uh, necks and this whole area is very tight. So if you are standing, one of the things that I, I do all the time is I clasp my hands behind me and I draw my shoulder blades back and down, and I drive my fist towards the floor, and then I add some kind of neck circles. This is something that won't disturb anyone on the side, and then you mix that in with a little bit of shaking. Because um, sometimes if you're doing a, uh, some kind of drill where you're doing some kind of striking upper body, if you're jammed up like this by the end, you're like, oh man, my neck's tight, my shoulder's tight. So sometimes just set, getting into a position where you're stretching and kind of settling your shoulders down, has been beneficial for me. Uh, another thing which uh, you can just look up, all the stuff that I've always talked about as far as shoulder circles, right, are really good to do. Rotation in the, in the shoulder joint. Things like we did yesterday where we were kind of put, placing our hands behind. So this is a little bit of an exploratory part for you. If you're not sure um, exactly what to target, try sprinkling a little bit of everything, right? That's kind of like the upper body is the way that I look at it. Mm -hmm. Anything else? No, I don't think that's pretty good. Um, you know, Jeremy just wants to know if you can have more active rest time during class. Yeah, and so this is specifically for someone like Jeremy, right? Um, when it's over forty, when uh, in the past, he, let's say this person would be resting on the side, and initially is just here, just that is where I used to have a problem would, would be that it would seem like this person's kind of given up. <laughs> And um, that's only pick on Jeremy. There's other other students that we have that we did where um, you do want to create a kind of like this strong will, right? But it's not like I'm just stoned. I'm not. I'm gonna keep going. But that's why when you're taking your breaths, make sure that your face isn't showing that you've given up. Yes, stay positive. Stay positive. So that's but right. that's why I also like to say maybe just give yourself a count. Like I'm only gonna do three breaths. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna take that moment and then I'm gonna get back in. You know, yeah. kind of give yourself a plan even within those 30 seconds or however long it yeah. be. And you know, in kettlebell swings, which is an awesome exercise to do kettlebell swings. Um, this, my last kettlebell class, we were doing this kind of time uh, power type of breathing. So, for example, if you know what a kettlebell swing is, we would do 10 swings and then take one breath. Then we would do 15 swings and take two breaths. 
and then we would take do thir 30 swings or 15, 15 to 20 swings and then we would do uh, three breaths so we would keep um, increasing the amount of reps that we did for swings and then just increasing the breath by one or two and so your breath you're trying and so my, the goal was that you try to make the breath last as long as possible because then your rest lasts longer so if I just finish a set if I do and then you got to go again that's a problem but if I just finished a set set it down and then inhale big exhale I'm still exhaling and then ready to go and so that's a, a great way to kind of add that that breathing that was a little bit of a tangent right okay so um, upper body that's a great stretch to do we, we talked about that um, some people have um, some tight back so this is where you can kind of bend and extend a little bit squeeze your butt light twists right as long as your hips stay straight and you're moving from the area of the ribs and the chest that's another thing to do and not in class usually but maybe if your home is getting a stick i love arm breaks stick arm breaks as an active recovery because you're getting a, just a huge upper body stretch and that is if you could imagine me holding onto a stick nice and wide my arms stay as straight as possible and i just make a big circle and i didn't bring a stick because i think i would hit your you and the laptop and the light because that's how it goes um, so that is for the upper body and then a really quick simple thing to do when you um, if you have to take a knee is actually take a knee because if you bring yourself down um, one knee down you can do a hip flexor stretch in kung fu we do a lot of things that are quad dominant where, where the front of your leg will get very tight and even though we're stretching the hamstrings we don't spend a lot of time stretching this stuff up here like if you think of the area of from your ribs all the way down to your knee that can get all really jammed up and very tight and so in the middle if of a, a set of, of exercises or drills you can take a knee breathe tuck your tail abs stay tight and you're going to kind of open up that area and then switch sides and then jump up and, and be ready to go i like mimi's idea of saying okay i'm only going to do it for two breaths each side or three breaths to totally each side because what happens then is active rest goes from taking those two to three breaths to like minutes and minutes passing by. Yeah. Um, so if somebody does want to stretch this area and they can't like necessarily like, oh, I only have 30 seconds to kneel yeah. or my knee hurts because the ground's hard, boo-hoo, uh, is there a way for them to target that area from a like standing position? Yes, or? but it's basically your hill climbing horse stance, right? Um, and you can adjust your hill climbing horse stance, your, your warrior stance in yoga, to think of it as um, trying, well, this is the way you should do it anyway, is really trying to get your hips to be as forward as possible. So, if you think of your, find your hip bone and imagine two lasers being struck, shot out straight, parallel to each other, then when you place one leg in front of the other, and then drive your hip forward, the more that you move this leg forward, the more that you'll get a stretch here. However, because you're not on your knee, you may be limited by your ankles. So if you are limited by your ankles, then maybe, then, then it maybe, maybe um, you could put your knee down and think, well, my ankles are kind of jammed up. So this is another way that you can sort of stretch your ankles. It's a, it's a little bit of a, the entire leg is being worked, so it's not completely targeted, but that may be something that you can do that can kind of loosen things up as well. Um, it's just not as targeted as being on your knee. That's all. Yeah. And so that is for this area here, for the hips and the, and the kind of hip flexors. And then the last thing is kind of doing a toe sit, either with a toes curl or a heel sit, which is where your toes are pointed down. Uh, toe sit, I call it because you're kind of sitting on the toes and, and your, your toes are curled and the ball of your foot, if you look at my hand, it's kind of like the ball of my hand, are sitting, is pressing to the ground. And so if you were to do it right, you should be able to hang out here for a long time and then also be able to put a lot of pressure down on the heels. I, I know, and by a lot of pressure, I mean someone should be able to stand on your heels and basically you, your structure of the ball of your feet can be, be on there. So not that I'm going to ask people to stand on it, but she could step on my heels. Um, and I know that my, and I see I made a quick adjustment. I'm like, okay, that's how I should be now. Um, sitting on there and again remember our first rule is that breathing is taking those deep breaths so don't just sit there and think about my toes are going to rip off think but sometimes you might feel that way you might feel that way um that is a actual like this evolutionary rest posture like in, in um 
in our typical societies as, as hunter gatherers, we should be able to kind of sit into, into that type of position. And then the other one is with the toes pointing out, so you're really just hit, sitting on your heels and you're stretching here. Very popular in the Japanese culture, I believe, to yes. kind of do that sit. Heroes pose. Yeah, and so those two positions give you a, a really good benefit of getting some big toe flexion and extension, which is really good for running, strides, all of these other things. Um, and then stretching out sometimes the front of the ankle, which gets very tight as well. So those are all of the options that we are going to go over today. Yep, yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, you know, so in Kung Fu class, like I said, my preferred method is all the, the focusing on the breathing and just kind of picking a position that you're only going to stay in for a couple seconds or so. You can't like do a full like yoga class on the side of the room or anything like that. But um, if you do ever feel lightheaded or those things, that's where you want to kind of bow out and just go outside. And you may need to take a posture where you are actively recovering a little Free more. Drinking water, sitting. And, and just kind of take your time with it, especially those of you who are in Orlando, Florida, when it's 100 degrees inside the temple, it's pretty much no joke in there. So um, we do want you to be really conscious of actively recovering between forms and between the drills, between bag work. Like even if it's just bag work and we're switching off, there's a moment for you to breathe right before right. you switch you know, position. It doesn't have to be a whole thing where you go to the side of the room and you take all this time. Like you should actually be always thinking about, okay, how am I feeling right before it's my turn to go, whatever it is, if it's a self-defense class or a drill class or a bag work class, like take that intention, like Oscar said, to actually take that time to reset yourself. And sometimes it could just be mentally and not actually even physically. It could just be one breath or you know something in your mind that kind of gives you a great reset. So. Yeah, and, I, and that is where I wanted to end this is, let's say you're in amazing shape and you're like, yeah, I don't get worn out in class. I don't need to take an active recovery. Well, sometimes you kind of have to wait your turn anyway if you're in a group class as, as you move forward. So do two things during that time if you don't need to rest. One, think about what you just did and see if you can do it better. And think about, is there something that I did that I can improve on? And then start visualizing, and part two is start visualizing what the next thing that you are going to do. And so that'll be an active practice as well. Um, so the mindset is huge, very, very important. But um, I'm assuming that there's a bunch of you out there that need to take that little bit of that little 30 second to a minute break to do some active rest or active recovery work. And that's all I got. All right. Thanks for joining us on 45th Food. We're here every Tuesday at 7.45 p.m. Ish. Uh, if you have questions, let us know. Turn on notifications and follow us. And um, we have some big stuff happening next week. We're headed out to San Diego, but we'll still be here because we'll still be in town on Tuesday. So, um, but make sure you're checking all that stuff out because we're going to be presenting at San Diego Comic Con Joint Mobility. No, not really. No, we're, we're not going to be doing that. We're going to be doing fun things with swords and stuff. So, um, let us know what you think. And thanks for joining us on 45th. Ooh. All right. See you next week. Bye.